Hey, listen, if you want your hot takes, if you want your, you know, top five quarterbacks of all time lists and whatever else, you're free to go to talk radio. You're free to go somewhere else. We talk about football around here, and I'm going to bore you to tears today with one specific facet of football. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm David Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. Boy, if you still listen after that one. And this is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. Listen, it's a football show. If you want, I can get into AB's five biggest crimes against humanity or whatever that's going to get people to, to you know, talk or to call. Three, 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 hot takes are us or whatever. It's just, that, that's not my style. I'm into the football portion of football. Imagine. Presley Harvin III, very often in the 2022 season, did not look like the answer at the punting position. And the punting position is one of those, since I'm on the subject of, you know, hot takes and so forth, that becomes a hot issue in season, hardly ever discussed out of season. Why? Punting's not fun. You could upgrade your punter to the modern day version of Ray Guy and no one will care. But the first time Harvin lines up 15 yards back, takes that snap, and boots one all of 13 total yards, crawling out of bounds, you'll remember. And he's prone to doing that. It's felt at times over the couple years that he's been in Pittsburgh that he'll have one of those like every two weeks, and you'll go, wow, what are you doing with this guy? And it'll also feel like, even if it's not necessarily the case, it comes at the least opportune time. And you're thinking, just this kid, listen, I know they burned a draft pick on him. I know Mike Tomlin likes him. Hear that a lot, by the way, as it relates to Harvin, as if Tomlin has adopted him as his son or something. Tomlin has a a soft spot for the kid. He's had his tribulation since he's been in Pittsburgh, not just as a punter, but losing his dad. And the head coach has been there for him. That's not something to hold against anybody. And it's also not what would keep Harvin running back out onto the field. He will, of course, have to be a good punter. Now, we all know about the leg. That's the reason he was drafted. And we've all, at various points, seen the leg. But this might be a decent time to step back and ask yourself, is he really either A, that strong and that powerful and has that much potential that he should have been drafted and is worth sticking by, or B, is he really as awful as he seems sometimes with his inconsistency? So what I did, I looked at his deeper statistics for this episode and came up with some numbers here that are going to surprise you. At least I think they will because they surprised me. First, the basics. The main stat that arises with punters and has for a long time is plain and simple average distance. He ranked 28th in the NFL with an average punt of 44.5 yards. Now, that I was going to say it doesn't mean anything. It means something because if you really boom – a handful of them, your average is going to go way up. There are situations you're trapped inside your own, you know, somewhere inside your own 20, you really want to get monster kicks off. But there are other circumstances. So that's not a great number, no matter how you cut it up. What punters themselves, and Harvin will do this himself, will tell you is all that matters is net because that's a team stat. That means, of course, not only how far you kick it, but how much is given up in return, literally in the return. And Harvin's net punting is 41.1 yards. That's 21st best in the NFL. It's obviously a lot better than the other figure, but still not great and probably not worth a draft pick. All right, what about... 
planting them inside the 20 because that can shorten your average, obviously. If you're at the 40 or whatever, you know, and everybody's booing when the punting unit comes on. And the only thing you want to see from the guy is, listen, he'd better at least drop this inside the 20. Harvin had 20 of those in the 2022 season, and that ranked 25th among punters. Still not very good. All right, so he stinks. So challenge him, right? They're going to challenge him. They're bringing in people. They, they do it at every camp. There's always an extra kicker and always an extra punter, at least one. And they go, for those of you who aren't regulars at Latrobe, they go to some separate field. Uh, every once in a while during the practice, they'll all come onto the main field and participate with the full special teams. But for the most part, they're staying off by themselves. And because they can't extend their legs and wear them down, there's a lot of those practices where they're just like kind of not doing anything. But Harvin will have competition. And what will make that competition difficult to gauge, no matter what you see in preseason games, or definitely what you see in Latrobe, is that Harvin has one other stat that I dug up, and it might be the most important one of all. The Steelers special teams Overall, and I know Danny Smith takes a lot of heat because, again, when it comes to special teams, all you remember is the bad stuff. The punt coverage teams allowed an average of 5.7 yards on the return. You know where that ranked in the NFL? Numero uno. They were the best at it. And if you think about the components of that that are just the punting, like the hang time that allows the special teams coverage guys plenty of seconds to get down the field and surround their guy. If you look at fair catches that get forced because the football is in the air for so long. If you look at directional punting, which is a really, really big deal for Smith, because then he can scheme his guys to go in a certain direction and make sure that they don't make that big fatal mistake. All of those things contribute to the low figure for the return yards or the high figure if you're lousy at it. But the punter is a big part of that. It just doesn't show up in any of those other stats that I mentioned to you. So really, the only stat that matters with punting at the end of the day, I, again, distance is great if you're pinned in. But limiting the returns, not giving up the splash, not giving up six, that's a way, way, way bigger part of this. So don't underestimate, no pun intended here, the foothold that Harvin already has on this job that everybody seems to think should be in jeopardy. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. Today's J1Q comes from Matt, who says, DK, I actually had a dream last night that the Steelers were sputtering on offense, and I was yelling at my TV, Fire Matt Canada! <laughs> I love the new additions this year player-wise to the offense, but even with the upgraded talent, is it enough to overcome this OC? The easiest way for me to begin answering that, Matt, is to go specifically at your word, overcome. They're not going to be able to overcome the OC, certainly not in any literal sense. I do feel like for many years into the future, that all of us who followed the Steelers for a long time will have it resonating the way Ben Roethlisberger used to talk after a win in which he clearly was influential in the play calling, where he wanted to make it known that it was him and not Todd Haley who thought of certain things. So we would have this, yay, Ben, because everybody hates the OC in all situations, in all 32 markets. But if it was Ben's idea and it was playground ball, we were all behind it. And no one would even question 
whether or not it was just a narrative. It, that's not going to happen. So there's not going to be an overcome. There's not going to be, oh, I've seen all the various conspiracy theories just about how and why Kenny Pickett was able to find Najee Harris breaking into the end zone for that pass in Baltimore to win the game in the final minute. And, you know, play was called and they executed it. And okay, that's that. That's what this is going to have to be. It's going to have to be boring, meaning the answer, meaning the scenario. You're not going to see. Uh, let's really work around this guy and whatever. Even if that's not what you're asking, Matt, I feel like it's it's worth addressing here. Are they going to be able to overcome his lack of imagination, his lack of aptitude for charting NFL wide receiver routes, his lack of uh, aggressiveness in adjusting to an opponent uh, in general or even at halftime to something that the opponent is throwing at that's throwing you off? The answer to that is no. It's just a flat out no. You're not going to see the talent take over to the extent that it would overcome, to use your word again, lousy coordinating. Football is just way too scripted. It's just got too many pieces that are required to move in harmony for a single play to succeed. Never mind a drive. Never mind an entire game. Never mind 17 games. So this coordinator is going to have to be part of that. Or not. He can get fired. But if the players themselves, never mind the, the pats on the back that come for Canada from above, as tepid as they are, they do exist. When you hear it from the players, when the players say we've looked back at 2022 film and we see the mistakes that we made and we know and we believe what would have happened in a positive sense had we executed those plays that are there, I'm inclined to believe them because I'll also hear it from them off the record. I'll also hear it in a context where a year ago I might have heard, wow, what are we doing here? And I don't pick up on that stuff anymore, at least not yet. So if you want to be skeptical about Canada, stand in line. I'm in that line too. But there will be no separating the players from Canada or Canada from the players. The offense has to succeed and it has to succeed in concert with the coordinator. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. 